Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just saw them too, absolutely love this video. Please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. All right, I wanted to do a fun little video today. Nothing crazy. I'm just considering if the world was coming to an end, if there was an apocalypse, what houseplants would I grab to have in my little sack with me? So, sack? What? I don't know why I said that. So we are considering not only sentimental value today, but utility because I wanted to have some fun with this. I put in way more thought into this than I care to admit. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. The first plant is a topical one for me. It is, if you watch my vlog, you might laugh a little bit. I'm gonna go with the aloe plant. And this one, I recently had a burn somewhere on my body that is exposed in the vlog. I really became so thankful to have this aloe plant around. It has a lot of medicinal value, obviously. So if something went wrong out there in the wilderness, I would love to have an aloe plant on me, honestly. First of all, they propagate and grow really easily. You'll have tons of aloe to spare. I think that if the end of the world was coming, this is probably one of the most useful plants that you can have on you. Things can get crazy out there. You could scratch yourself on a bush or something and aloe's here to help. You all know I've struggled with this plant in the past. I think a lot of people the misstep that happens is with watering. A lot of people know that they need pretty strong uh, indirect light to thrive, but watering can get a little bit tricky. You wanna make sure that the leaves are a little bit squishy and soft like this. Like you can see that there's some give. I don't know how well you can actually see that. But you want some give in the leaves before you introduce more water to the soil. They store their water in their leaves. So if you overwater them, the leaves are gonna kinda like burst and become a little bit too heavy for the plant and then you will no longer have an aloe plant. Just make sure that you're watering it sparingly. It's a pretty chill plant. I think that the issue comes where we kind of smother this plant with attention and <laughs> give it too much. Number one, aloe plant. Next plant on my list for the apocalypse is this monstera plant. I have once called it a Monstera Albo, but the person who traded this plant with me has since said they're not sure what kind of variegation it is. That is still pending, I'm not really sure, but I can see variegation on the stem here or the petiole, whatever. I think it's coming. I just have to be patient and see what kind of variegation it is. Why is this plant on my little apocalypse list? And that is because I know out there, I'm gonna run into a houseplant sucker and I could trade like some crackers or something for this. I just know in my heart, someone, someone out there is gonna be like, if I'm gonna die, I wanna die with a Monstera Albo in my possession and I can probably barter for something good. Sorry, camera died. I would also bring battery packs with me in the apocalypse because you know I'd be vlogging it. Yeah, I would call me crazy, but I would bring this with me at the end of the world. It's also tiny with very high trade value. I could just slip this right into my little backpack and be on my happy little way. And also I do love this plant. <laughs> there is also some sentimental value here. Let's switch things up. Let's talk about a plant that I would take with me because I actually just love it. And that is, it looks kind of sad right now, my Syngonium Batik, Batik. I just would not be able to part ways with this plant. She would be with me till the very end. I have been wanting this plant for a very long time. I have admired it from afar on Instagram, on Pinterest, the whole thing. To finally be able to take care of this in my home has been such a little treat. Granted, I am on my last leaf, but we are doing the best that we can. <laughs> She had a little bit of recovery to do after shipping. We are working with what we got. Honestly, I think it's a bit poetic to have a plant on its final leaf with you during the apocalypse. I don't know, you can tell me what you think. But we would just keep pushing forward together and it puts such a smile on my face to see this plant. Wishless plants do happen sometimes. It, it does look very similar to the Syngonium white butterfly if you are familiar with that common plant 
but as this matures, the venation is a little bit more pronounced and there's definitely a bit more contrast, I would say. For her, I've noticed that bright and direct light is great, especially since she is heavily variegated. And then on top of that, Syngonium actually like to stay a little bit moist. I think a lot of people say that you can let them dry out, but I have not had good experiences with that being my care routine with them. I really recommend keeping your Syngonium just like a hair bit on the wetter side. I think that they're gonna thrive a bit better because whenever I miss a day or two of watering, my Syngonium are some of the first plants to fall down. I would go ahead and do that. Make sure you're fertilizing them. If you really want them to thrive, give them a little moss pole because they will vine eventually. Definitely recommend her if you are into Syngonium or want to spice things up in your little plant collection. Mwah. Okay, next plant is a double whammy because it is sentimental and useful. We have this cactus. And this is the oldest plant in my collection. I have had her since I believe high school and I am 24. So I graduated high school seven years ago. <laughs> That's terrifying. I've had her for a little bit. I did propagate her and she is growing um, two new little puffs at the top. I do still have the propagation, but I'm not really sure what's going on with her. This plant has seen it all. It has been with me through many ups and downs. So I am very emotionally attached to this plant. Honestly, if, if it really came down to it, this would be the plant that I grabbed above any other plant in my home. I think it's just the fact that I've had her for so long. I can't imagine not having her with me. <laughs> yeah, definitely would grab her. And then there's the obvious thing here where she would be the perfect long distance weapon. All I have to do is just like chuck her at the enemy and I could buy myself a little bit of time to escape. This one is literally perfect. I would absolutely have her with me on deck. I would just say the hardest part with her would be carrying her around. Logistics aside, perfect plant here for the apocalypse. This is a cactus, obviously. I don't know exactly what kind. I think it's like some kind of mammal, mommy laria, mammy. I don't know. As with most cacti, you just have to water it like I probably water her like once a month, but when I water her, I water her. Like she gets drenched and then I let her chill out for about a month. I have her in very high direct light. There you go. There you go. Oh, she's so beautiful. I love the little red spikes up top. She scares me a little bit. I've been pricked by her and it's itchy. So I know that she would have my back. She would definitely sacrifice herself for me and give the enemy a good little itch. All right, last plant. We're really breezing through these, but just a fun little video for today. The last plant I have is another sentimental one, and I have talked about this before, but I can't not talk about it again, and that is my Dracaena marginata tricolor. Okay. It is so sentimental because it was given to me when my childhood dog passed away, Lucky. So this is my Lucky plant. It was given to me by some coworkers that I don't particularly enjoy uh, reminiscing about, but it is just from that time period and it is kind of symbolic. So I love her regardless. She was in my old little cubicle for some time and almost died. She did have like one or two other plants in here with her. And then I saved her from the fluorescence. I put her on the little subway with me, took her home, repotted her. And ever since then, she's really begun to thrive and has grown significantly while being in, in a house. I don't recommend her for a cubicle, but that's not really the concern of an apocalypse, is it? Yeah, I would carry her around. She makes me very happy. And honestly, I'm surprised. There was a little bit of a learning curve, especially since I had to rehab her post office. I let her dry out uh, fairly, like, Fairly so, she gets pretty dry. And I give her bright and direct light and she's pretty happy. I do fertilize her and she definitely enjoys that. She's grown a lot faster with liquider in her system. All in all, a very, very touching plant for me. And I would absolutely, I think this would be the second plant that I would grab. Uh, in my collection, honestly. There are some bigger plants that are sentimental to me, but they are large. 
and not helpful for an apocalypse. She is, however, getting in my mouth, so I'm gonna put her down. All right, and that was a quick video, but it was kind of fun to make, I don't know. Thank you all so much for watching. Please comment down below what plants you would take, whether it's on a sentimental note or out of utility. Please comment it down below in the comment section. I would really love to hear it. I think that would be kind of funny. Please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and you wanna see more plenty content from me. Like this video, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Huge thank you to all of my amazing members. Thank you to O'Neal, Val, Katrina, Audrey, Louie, Heather, underscore B, Jacqueline, Brooke, Daniel, Vanessa, Michelle, Tori, Mary, and Candy. You guys are the best and I'll see you in my next video.